week we talked about keys. We talked about the keys, and, and that's what this series is about. It's about the keys to life. How can, what are the keys to a better life, okay? Now, I'm not saying you have a bad life. You might, your life might be good, and you're like, man, life is good, you know? There's a company that made a whole millions of dollars off of that little statement, life is good. You know, and they made little cartoons, they made t-shirts, mugs, posters, you name it. And they've made millions of dollars off of that statement. Okay? So your life may be good, that's okay. Uh, my goal and my encouragement is, can we make life better? Okay, good is good, but better is more. And you like that little curveball, it's still makes sense. Okay? All right. So we're going to be walking through different keys. Last week we talked about the keys to a good home, and we learned that following these principles, we can have a better home, a better home life. And the first thing we saw was that from the passage of Scripture we looked at was, unless the Lord builds your home, you're going to be laboring in vain. Okay? Unless God is a master builder of your home, of your life, you're going to be working for nothing. You're going to be the hamster on the hamster wheel, running and running and running and running. It seems like you're not getting anywhere. And I run into those people all the time. People ask me, how do you know these things? Well, one, I was once one of these people. And sometimes I revert back because I'm hard-headed. And then i got to get a snap back out and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know, you know it's not going to get you anywhere. You know, and sometimes that happens to me as well. So I own that. All right? But I talk to so many different people and say, Pastor, I can't understand what's going on, you know. Uh, it's not that things are horrible or things are really bad, but I know they could be better. Right? So there's nothing wrong with wanting to do things and wanting to get things better. And here's some of the keys. And one of the primary things is unless you're letting God be at the center of your home, okay? If God is not that center of your home, you're going to be working and working and struggling and struggling. It seems like you're not getting anywhere. You're, you're not uh, progressing or moving forward. Right? The scripture says, unless the Lord is at the center of your house, you're going to be working for nothing. You're going to be laboring for nothing. I'll share with someone the other day. I said, well, you know, uh, bro, he said, things aren't that bad. I mean, they really are. I said, well, that's great, you know. But could they be better? Right. So, well, I got this and I got that. They started mentioning all the material blessings and possessions that they have acquired. I said, look, I don't know about all that. Let me just let me just say this. I read somewhere, and I usually always say it that way. Because I don't say in the King James Version of the Bible, it says this, you know. I usually don't do that. Okay? But I said, I've read somewhere that says, what would it profit a person or a man if he gains the whole world but forfeits his soul in the process? What would it profit? Of what benefit would it be? You have all the material possessions and all the material riches and everything, you know, of, of, of glorious and, and goodness, if you will, that this life can offer. But in that process, in that journey, on the way to acquire those things, you forfeit and give up your walk and your relationship with the living God. Of what benefit is it? Because when we leave this place, guess what? None of that. Just naked you came in, naked you will leave. Okay. Ashes to ashes and dust. The Lord given, the Lord taken. That's, that's a realization that when I put it that way, like, man, you gotta go there. <laughs> that's, that's I want to tell you the truth. If I didn't, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be telling you the truth. Those material possessions, are, they're short. They're not going to be here forever. They're wearing away right now as we speak. So unless the Lord is at the center of your house, we're working for nothing. Unless our home is centered on Jesus Christ, then we're working for nothing. In the end, it'll be for nothing. It'll be for nothing. It'll be sadly, sadly disappointed. We also saw that keys for a good home one, to center our life on the Lord, to put God first and give Him primary, primary place and a, a, a preference in our lives. And then we saw there's some other things that we need to do that we can have uh, within our home in order to have a good home, in order to have uh, uh, the, the keys that we need to have a good uh, uh, working and, and flowing home. Number one is communication. We have to learn to communicate. 
And that's one area that so many of us struggle with. We're not good at communicating. Okay? And remember, communication isn't about you doing all the talking. That's hard for me. Okay? Because I like to talk. Okay? But communication is listening twice as much as you talk. Okay? Again, that's why you have two ears, one mouth. So you can listen twice as much as you speak. Communication is learning to be a good listener. Okay? People love to talk to you when they know that you're going to listen to them. One of the hardest things that I had to learn in communication, me, I had to learn and had to put to practice, and sometimes I still struggle with it because I'm still me. Okay? So I still think God is fine-tuning in my life. But it's listening to somebody and then wanting to give them an answer before they're even done talking to you. Okay? You want to give them an answer. You want to give them a response. And they're still, you know, sharing with you. They haven't even gotten to the meat, the meat of the, the message. And you're already like, ah, it's a pain. I mean, you want to start telling them, you know? And sometimes I do that. I have to be careful because sometimes I do that with me or with my little one. You know? She's trying to tell me a story and I'm already trying to interject, you know? And she wasn't looking for me to interject. She wasn't looking for me to get, she just want to share something with me, you know? I was just trying to tell you something. I, I wasn't looking for, you know, none of that stuff. And see, sometimes we got to learn that. And that's not just with our kids, but that goes with our, our, our spouses as well. This morning, I got a phone call from my dad. And so me and I didn't realize, no, you know, me and my dad's relationship has been very bumpy, to say the least. Let me put it that way, in a nice way. It's been bumpy over the last, how old am I? Several years. <laughs> it's been bumpy. It's been, it's been rough. And this morning he called me, and, and uh, I had already spoken to my sister, and I already, you know, everything my dad fixed to tell me, I, I already know. And, uh, you know, the hardest part for me is he's sharing with me what the doctor's been telling him is for me to tell him, I've been telling you this for the last, you know, and get, start getting on to him, you know, about it. You know, because I've, I've been telling him this. I've said, this is what's coming if you don't. You know, get this squared away. He's been in the hospital going on a month now. And he's fixing that major surgery this coming week. Things that I've been talking to him about for a little over a year or so. So my initial reaction as I'm talking to my dad is to, you know, Miss, I told you to go ahead. <laughs> But then I was like, I had to put myself in check and just listen. He's not asking me for all that. He's just trying to share. And he's trying to share his, and I, and I, because I know my dad, while he's telling me, you know, I have faith, it's going to be all right, I can hear it because I know him. And so it's like, okay, let me, let me just take a minute and say, just pray for me. But it's so easy to want to start interjecting, right? And I just listen. And all I did was listen. I, I never said anything like that. I, everything else right there. Like, let the old swallow it back down. Get it back. <laughs> so stop. That's communication. we got to learn to communicate. Okay? Learn to communicate. Learn to talk. Learn to listen. Okay? To have a key to a good home is learn to have fun. Learn to have fun. Why is that so difficult sometimes? You know, we let life stress us out so much, so bad sometimes, and we're so concerned with so many things, that we don't even laugh anymore. You notice that? You know? You're really, you be long, frustrated day, and then you come home, and rather than come home and say, man, all right, I'm home. You know, the house is a mess, this and that, all right, but whatever, I'm home. I'm a safe place. You know? I had to put up with BS all day. Now I'm home. I'm going to do that. We had, let's just, you know, let's order something. Let's go get something to eat. Let's watch some TV. Let's just chill for a little bit, you know. The pressure is off. We're home. But do we do that? Uh -huh. We've been taking orders all day. Somebody's been, you know, and then we're pushing our buttons. 
And we get home and what do we do? We jump down somebody else's throat. Well, we've been going through all day, now we're going to put somebody else through it. Yeah. We're, instead of coming and relaxing and having a good, you know what, I'm home. You know what, that, those clothes will be there later, they'll be up the dishes, they're going to be there. We got to throw them away, we'll buy new ones. You know? <laughs> We'll wash them toilets. We'll go bathe like seven bucks. We'll go get a whole pack. Go we'll get some brand new toilets, you know? You gotta wash them if you don't want to. <laughs> no time where everybody like, no, just turn them inside out. We ain't gonna, can't wash them. We ain't gotta wash our dryer. You gotta know, wash them in the sink or in the bathtub or you can turn them inside out. They'll be fresh for tomorrow, you know? Back in the day. Back in the day. Not in my house, that was somebody else I like need. <laughs> But no, we come home and we bring that with us. And it's like, no, have fun. You know, that's one thing. Uh, my grandma, one of my grandmas, we go spend time with her in the summers. And my grandma was, man, she was a blast. A blast. We did crazy stuff with grandma. I remember one time we were out in the yard playing water, water gun fights. We had water, it was in the hives. We were out the water. And she was out watering the plants, you know. And we're, we're getting, you know, me and my, my, my cousins and boys were beating up on our younger cousins and girls. And we're like, we got, you know, we, we, we ain't got water guns, you know. Before the super soakers, they were like, you go empty out the spring for the detergents and stuff like that. And now, like, rinse them out real good and those are your water guns, you know. And so, yeah, that's wrong for that too. But anyway, we're out playing, right? We're getting them real good. And my grandma comes around the corner with a water hose and shh. Gets us bad, you know. And we're all laughing. We're running around the yard like crazy. And grandma's there with us with the water hose, and we're just laughing and having a good old time. You know? that was grandma jumped right in. And she's like, "All right, everybody, hop in the car. Where are we going, girl? Let's go get some ice cream." If you can't laugh in your home, if your home ain't a safe place where your family can come in, just keep their shoes on to laugh and say, man, this has been a crazy day. But you know what? I'm safe now and I'm home and we can laugh. And we can laugh about the crazy stuff that happened throughout the day. Man, if you come home, that's pins and needles. That's miserable. Nobody's going to go home to that, right? Okay. You're going to go home and all they're going to do is nag on you? For some of you husbands, some of you wives, you know why they show up, they don't want to come home, they pick up that extra hour, extra two hours, you know. Because they're just miserable when they go home. Nobody wants to be in misery, right? Not that some of you. You do, but maybe somebody else does. Have fun. We also talk about key to a good home is when you're there, be there. Okay? When you're there, be there. This has been tough. Okay? But man, put that dang cell phone down. You know? You've been out all day, you ain't seen each other all day, you finally get to spend some time together and you're on Facebook. What's that about? You're texting. You're looking at dumb videos again for the bazillion time. You know? It's a cell phone. Spin. Hey. You're going to be there, be there. Don't be there wishing you were somewhere else. You know? Be there. Be engaged. Be engaged. The other day, I, I left my phone charging in the car. I know. I was surprised. My wife was like, really? You're not taking your phone now? No. I need to charge it. It was dying. I'm going to leave it there. I don't want it. It was the biggest relief. The biggest relief. It was like, man, it was great for a little bit. If you're going to be there, be there. Okay? And then this was for the, the, the adults, the parents, lovingly discipline your kids. Okay? They will thank you for it later. If you lovingly discipline them. If you beat them, okay, that's different. Now don't get me wrong, I got beat growing up. Okay? My mama did not play, okay? She did not play. But I learned real early, okay? As hard-headed as I was, I learned that mama would play. 
And what mama says goes. And when my mama said, I brought you in, I'll take you out, I believe her. Okay? I still believe her, and she's with Jesus. I still believe her. All four foot eleven of them. Okay? I was terrified. Terrified. And she let me know how far she would I, she would go as far as she needed me to. I never forget when she took my sister down. Okay? Took her down. Like, what? Yeah, uh, she just came sliding across the floor like she was levitating, like she was even walking. <laughs> so my sister called back to her, went up, grabbed her, took her down. Like, form tackle. Okay? It would be a lot in the NFL, that's illegal now. But took her down. She was on top of her, letting her know the law, who the law was. And I was like, dang, mama. Because I'm three years younger than my sister, my older sister. Dang, mama. And I was like, mama, you're going to kill her. I was like, I'm going to try to get my mom off my sister. And I just knew right then and there, guess what I learned? I never was. Ever. Mama give me that look of yes ma'am. That's, that's all I needed. You know, I believe it. But she used to tell me, you know what, son? I'm not gonna let you grow up and end up in prison. Thank you. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. And you bring shame to mom. Not what I'm about. When I got in trouble at school, I'll still me, guys. Okay. When I got in trouble at school, you know what I told them? Yeah, you know, kids not to call my mama. You know what I said? You call anybody but my mama. You better not call my mama. I'll burn this school down if you call my mama. You think I'm bad now? You call my mama, I'll really turn this place upside down. You do whatever you got to do to me here, but you don't send no notes. They're not going to make it. If you send it through me, if you send it through the mail, I'll be through before you do, before she does. You're not sending and you're not calling. That woman cannot find out. So you beat me here. Okay? You do what you gotta do here. Okay, well, I need to call that you want. You gotta ask for permission. I'm look, I'm right here at the desk. <laughs> Get that paddle out, you know. Handle this. You don't come on, boy. <laughs> this would be nothing compared to that. Lovingly disciplined. You gotta correct your kids sometimes. Okay? Sometimes you gotta line them out, or else the world will line them out. And the world ain't gonna be loving. The world's gonna be cruel. Okay? And sometimes, listen folks, and I say this because I, I, I look at the school and I see all kinds of different stuff, just to be honest with you. Sometimes your kids are wrong. Okay? Sometimes you gotta go and defend and fight for them. I, I get that. I'm a parent too. But guess what? Sometimes me and me are wrong. Okay. And you need to handle it. You need to handle it. And you take it out of their hands and say, no, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. I'll make sure this doesn't happen. Do it in a little way. <laughs> Lastly, Joshua made this declaration, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You have to make a commitment. Okay. Who are you going to serve? And that's what Joshua said. The, the keys to a good home is what he said. He says, you can serve whoever you want. I'm not telling you you have to serve God. And this morning, I'm not here to tell you you have to serve the Lord. You don't have to. Make a choice. That's what Joshua said. You can serve the gods that your forefathers served in the other land. You can serve the gods of the people that we, in the land that we're living now. You can serve and worship them. He said, but for me and my house, my people... In my home, we're going to serve the living God. We're going to serve the Lord. Y'all serve who y'all want. You do what you want, but in my home, this is what we're doing. Okay? This is what we're doing. You've got to make a choice. Make a choice. I tell people all the time, don't take my word for it. It's because I said no. 
to me. You don't have to follow these principles. You don't have to apply this to your home. You don't have to take these keys and say, you know what, let me try them. You can say, you know what, that man crazy. Brother Marsh don't know what he's talking about. Go do that. Come see me in a little while. We'll, 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 we'll compare notes. Okay? We'll compare notes. And if you're honest, and I run to people all the time, tell me everything's fine, bro. <laughs> no, it ain't. No, it ain't. You know it ain't. Okay? You know it ain't. Make a choice. <laughs> Today we're talking about our car key. Last week we talked about our house key or our home key. Today we're talking about our car key. And as we look at our car key, I want our car keys to represent uh, the journey of our life. If we get in our car to go somewhere, we're on a journey, we're going on a destination. Some journeys are short, we're going from the house to church or to the grocery store or stuff like that. But when you look at the big picture, uh, we're on a journey through life. And we're on a journey to a destination, a final destination. If you haven't realized that, that's what's happening. Okay? My question for you this morning is, where are you headed? Where are you going? On this journey of life, what's going, what stops are you making along the way? And ultimately, what's going to be your final destination? Because all of us will have a final destination of one or two places. One or two places. Be where we will finally spend eternity. Where are you at? What's your journey like? And how do you plan on getting there? In John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and his followers as he was preparing them for his impending death and what was to come. He shared these words to offer comfort. But I'll share them with you this morning, not, not, not in a comforting way, uh, not to tell them to be comforted by them, I don't care about said that, right? But just to get some insight of the journey and the vehicle that is necessary for us to get us to our final destination if this is where you want to go. In John 14, verse 1 through 6, Jesus said this, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Some of your Bible versions may say mansions. Okay? Some of your uh, Bible versions may say homes or rooms. Okay? There are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and I will receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way and where I am going. And Thomas spoke up and said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we then know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but to me. Let's pray real quick and we'll talk about this. Father God, once again, we thank you for your word, for the opportunity to come together to study your word, Father, to grow in our knowledge and understanding of you, Father God. May your Holy Spirit be our teacher and our leader and our guide. And Father, would you open and help us to open our hearts and our minds to your truth, that we might receive you into our lives, Father God. And we might live our lives that honor and glorify you. For this we humbly ask and pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. You know what I run into so many people that are troubled right now? About so many different things. About uncertainty about concerns and crisis of what's going on in the world and we're living in a crazy place right now we're living through some crazy times. Okay? But Jesus said, don't be troubled. And ultimately what he said is, guys, don't worry. Don't worry. If you believe in the Father, if you put your trust in the Father, then put your trust in me also. Trust me. So I don't know about you, uh, uh, we live in a crazy place, but when my master, my, my Lord, my creator, my savior tells me, you know what? You don't need to worry. Don't worry. Don't let these things bother you. Don't let them get you uh, off focus and out of, out of uh, 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 jilted, out of place. Just don't worry. I, ultimately, this is what I hear in the back when I hear those words. I hear Jesus saying, I, Got this. I got this. Now, don't delude yourself. You say, okay, well, then I don't need to pay my bill. 
photos, I'm going to fit the water, I'm going to put gas in my car, I'm going to fit the light. Uh, that's not a gift for religion. That's not a gift for You still live in this world, we've got to do what we need to do. But what Jesus is ultimately saying there says, look, when we talked about the keys to a good home last week. When God is at the center of your home and Jesus is at the center of your life, it brings peace that surpasses, the scripture says, all understanding. It brings a peace to your heart, to your soul, to your mind that surpasses all the understanding in the intellect of man. It takes you to a place where it, doesn't, it might not make sense. The whole world can be collapsing around you, but you know what? I know everything's going to be all right. I know everything's going to be okay. It's like with my dad, and I said this Wednesday, and y'all kind of looked at me kind of funny, and I, I guess the way I worded it sounded really bad. Somebody told me, because I bounced that off them later in the week, they said, yeah, that sounded really bad. You know, but the way I said it, if, if the Lord wants it, and my dad's ready, he can go home, go be with Jesus. And so I, 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 it came off the way they told me, said, it came off like you said you want your dad to die. <laughs> well, that ain't exactly what I meant, but it wouldn't be a bad thing, not for him. See, for us, we look at, at life and death so differently. We look at the world so differently. See, God doesn't look at it. That's why Paul said to be absent in the body and to be present with the Lord. That's why Paul said for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. He didn't say for me to keep on living is gain. He said for me to die, I get my reward. That's why as I look at my, my dad's, what's coming and the surgery that's coming, it's serious. Very serious. But if the Lord wills, he'll pull through. If the Lord wants to take him, he's going to a better place. He's going to the promise. He's going to receive his rewards. With everything that God has in store. And I have peace with that. Will I miss my dad? Yes. As much as we bumped heads and as much as our own, yeah, I'll miss it. Yeah, I'll miss it. Oh, but I'll have peace in my heart in the middle of that storm. And everybody's worried about what's going on. Is our president crazy? He may be. Right? Everybody's worried about what's going on. He may be. But guess what? As long as God still God and Jesus is still sitting on the throne, it don't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter. I don't say that ignorantly and I don't say that lightly. But I say that when you put your faith and your confidence and your trust in Jesus, in the middle, no matter what the storm comes, you're going to be okay. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let the stresses of life wear you down and wear you out. Wear you out as long as God is at the center of your home. You know when those stresses and worries will wear you out? When God is not at the center. When God is not at the center. That's what we call. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? How are make it? You know? How are we going to have it? You, you may tell you how much God loves you. Okay. He loves you so much he sent his son to die for you. We'll cover that scripture here in a minute. But God does stuff for us all the time that we don't even do. If you would just pay attention. Let me share, let me share this with you this morning. Okay. At home as I'm getting my notes together, I put my headphones on. And I put on my worship playlist. And I'm going through my worship playlist, right? And the last song we did was on our worship playlist. And it came up and I was like, oh man. And I almost text Felice for her to play that song today. I said, man, y'all should do this song. Because I and man, it made me feel good. And I was like, man, I love this song. And I almost texted her and I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to interfere with what the Holy Spirit's put on her heart. You know what I mean? The role of the Holy Spirit's been played and I'm not in. And so I lead, let the Spirit lead her as He wills. Right? But I thought about it and I wanted to. But I didn't. Okay? I didn't. But I listened to it at the house. And then, 
We get here, and I, I didn't know you were going to do that song. No clue. We didn't talk about it. No clue. And I thought we were done. I grabbed my Bible. Right before that song came on, I grabbed my Bible. I was ready to come up. And she kept playing, and I was like, and I'm not going to lie. This was my reaction. Really? One more song? This was not my reaction. <laughs> it really was. It was my reaction, okay? Why? Because I'm still me, I tell you. You know, sometimes you always got to hit me in the back of the head and say, oh, fool, you know, chill. You know, but I'm like, really, one more song. I'm like, never even get out of here. You know, you know I'm going to preach an hour myself, you know. And so, hey, and then she started playing that song, and I could just see Jesus looking at me going, mm -hmm. you know. I was like, oh, that's the song I wanted her to play, and I didn't even ask for it. I heard it at the end. And I was already wanted it, I was already gonna do the beat up sign. <laughs> and I didn't, I let it go. And and then God said, Son, I got you. I got you. You know? And then Mars, that's just a coincidence, you know? It's just one of those things that happen. Is it? Man, because those coincidences happen a lot to me. You know? Like, I gotta be real lucky. Well, I gotta go buy a lot of tickets, something, you know. But man, that's how much about little stuff that God's just like, I got you. I want to bring joy to your life, joy to your heart. When you let me have control, I got you. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna bring joy to your heart and to your life. Yeah, there's gonna be struggles. Yeah, there's going to be hardships. I'm going to tell you this morning, those, I had that conversation with my dad. I talked to my sister. And then I was thinking of, of, of mom and daughter and how much I've been missing her. And in the middle of the storm, that's why I put my headphones on. That's how I got to do my mind. i got to focus. You got to my heart. And that song came on. You love them. Of course, Thomas speaks up and says, 
don't know where you're going. I don't know how to get there. You're know, all confused. Ona Thomas. Okay, anybody here named Thomas? I apologize. So Ona Thomas, you know, he just, he wanted to know. I, I'm thankful for Thomas. Let me say this to you. If Thomas gets a bad rap in the Bible from the disciples, like, oh, man, Dowdy Thomas, you know. How many of us relate to Dowdy Thomas? Be honest. I know, I'd be, I know I'd be the one asking that question. I'm glad he asked it. He asked it for people like me. Because you know what? I'd be asking it. Okay? I have asked it. I have asked the Lord on numerous times. Lord, I don't know what you're talking about. When is, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get there? How is this going to happen? How do you tell me that, you know, if I give me, if I give my offerings, I'll be blessed and I'll get more. I, can, I can't now give you. How, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. When I'm faithful, you're going to open the floodgates of heaven and I will be blessed. That don't make sense to me. How do I, how do I add by subtracting? That don't make sense to me. That's not good math, Lord. <laughs> and then he blesses. And then he blesses. And then he blesses. I'm, I, I'm faithful and obedient. Confused sometimes. <laughs> I said, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to trust you. It don't make sense to me. I'm going to trust you. I know it don't, I don't have to, it don't have to make sense to me because I'm not the one pulling all the strings. You are. I'm not the one in control anyway. You are. I just got to trust. Let me trust. He works now. He provides. He opens up the doors. I was all worried. Let me share this. I probably have shared with y'all in my life. Let me share it again. I was all worried going into this semester. I'm all worried. I know you went okay. Because so going into the semester, since the last we're this fall, since last fall, they I found out that this is my last semester of school. I got a student teach. Okay? Well I found out during student teaching you're not allowed to work. I'm, I'm employed by the school district. They told me, no, you can't work while you student teach. Because you got a student teach for eight hours a day. When are you gonna work? And I tried to get it, man. I'm telling you, I had meetings with everybody. I called everybody. I, you know, everything I could do. I exhausted all my options. And I finally had one professor say, you're just going to have to take out loans, son. And you're just gonna... I said, I can't. Or they were saying, you're just not going to have to work. I, I'm grown. I don't buy... <laughs> I'm grown. I'm, I'm a grown person. I got kids. I got a family. I got kids in college. I got bills. You know, I, I ain't mom and daddy ain't writing me no check. I gotta figure this out. I'm the one taking care of stuff. So well, you're gonna have to take out all of this. That's not an option. How am I gonna do that? Now, if it came down to it, I didn't want to go down that road. I struggled through that. I struggled all the spring trying to figure it out how I'm gonna do it. Then finally, I get it towards the end. We're already getting into the school year's about to start. Two weeks before the school year starts. I get a call from our admin office and say, Mr. Garcia, we need you to come in and sign your resignation. And what I wanted to say was I rebuked that from the devil. I ain't that. That's what I wanted to say. And I said, well, hold on. Can I meet with HR? I'm going to you know, see if we can work something out. And they said, you know what? Go ahead. Uh, hold on. I'll call you back. And they called me back and said, yeah, they're going to meet with you. So I went and met with uh, our, our HR director. He said, Mars, how can we help you? I said, this is my situation, sir. I said, there's no way I can't work. I mean, I can't work. I cannot work because I'll lose my health insurance. And Lord knows I need that. Okay? <laughs> my whole family's on me. I got to find a solution. He said, let me get back to you. All right. But in that situation, you know, he's been ill. I didn't turn anything back. I gave. I didn't want to be that guy that called every five minutes. I wanted to go, but I didn't. So I hadn't heard anything for a week. I'm going on the second week. School's about to start, and I'm starting to panic. Yeah. I'm like, Lord, where are you at, Lord? You know? Don't you see what I'm suffering here? Oh, the children of Israel did. And then finally, I, I finally I said, Hey, I had heard nothing. They said, No, we forward everything to the superintendent. He wants to meet you. Can you come up here? I said, let me check my schedule. I'll be right there. You know, I went up there. Came in, we sat down. 
And we didn't, if you don't know, if you haven't met our superintendent, he's an amazing guy. Okay. So different. So, so different. He didn't go sit at his desk and like, you know, start seeing stuff on the desk. He shook my hand, met me at the door, walked me in, and then we sat. He said, no, let's not go with this. Sit right here. We sat at the table right next to each other. He said, how can I help you? He said, I'm familiar with your situation. How can I help you? Sir, this is my sister. This is what I need. He said, okay. Are you willing to work like crazy hours if you need to? I said, I'll do whatever I gotta do on my end. He said, okay. He said, I'll make sure you get 40 hours. I'll prove 40 hours. It might be weird. After school, weekends, you know, but I'll make sure you're approved for 40 hours. I was just trying to get enough to cover my insurance. As long as your school's okay with it, we're, we're okay with more. I emailed my school, they said, no, we, whatever you do after those eight hours student teaching, that's all you need to do. I got to keep my job, keep my benefits, and if you don't know how long it's been since I've worked 40 hours in a week since I've been going to school, forever. I don't know what it's like to have a full check. You know? Yeah. And all in the background, I could just hear the Lord going, You want to bet that first check came in, I didn't get that tie, really? I go, thank you. Here's your share. Here's what's yours. Thank you for blessing me. It's not an issue. Bless me. It works out. You know where I'm going. You know the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus is our way to heaven. Jesus is our access to the throne. Jesus is our, our journey and the vehicle to a better place. If you haven't realized that by now, man, you're missing out. You're missing out because God has something amazing and great for you. And until you experience Jesus Christ in your life, man, it's hard. It's like me telling you how good a watermelon tastes and you ain't ever been into a watermelon. Oh, that's juicy that gets all right here. You know, like, man, that's Jesus is amazing. Until you experience it for yourself, it's hard to describe. But he did describe. Jesus said, goes on to say, I am the truth. Jesus fully reveals to us the will of the Father. People all the time have to go, I want to know God's will. Then get to know Jesus. It's real simple. If you get to know Jesus, you'll understand God's will for your life. You really will. That's what Jesus came to reveal. He said, I came to reveal the Father to you. This is what the Father wants. You see me, you see the Father. You see what I do? This is what the Father wants us to do. Just do it. And He laid it all out for us. I mean, we overcomplicate things all the time. You know? Why? Because we want the cheetah that wanted to catch on fire and talk to us. You know? Okay, I want to with that burning bush experience. With that burning bush experience. You know? Do like we did when we were kids. That she didn't want to, we used to, my grandma had a big one in the front yard, that's what she was watering, she was made water. It's like she had a big one in the front yard, you know, all across her fence. I mean, huge. And me and my cousins, she would send us outside to go pick, and she didn't want to go, you know, pick me a couple of women, make some, some sun sun and that. All right. So we'd be out there. So we ought to do this. The red ones, real juicy, they're super ripe and they're super squishy. And you ever get some on your hand? And then, yeah, and then accidentally, like, Like pepper spray yourself, okay? All right. Well, then it ain't good enough to just do it to yourself, right? You gotta go to your cousin, yeah, you know, because he's there laughing at you. The paybacks, and before you know, we're running out the yard, spirit, chilling, and wanting all over each other, you know? Yeah. And then don't go rinse it off with the water hose. That's just dumb too. <laughs> anyway, I had no idea where that was coming. Jesus is the truth. He revealed to you the full will of the Father. When you get to know him. I am the life. Jesus brings life to those who follow him. I am life. Have you ever told somebody you need to get life? Okay. Have you ever heard somebody tell you that? Have you ever felt like that? There's got to be more to life than this. When you're living for Jesus, you will never see it. 
know what you'll be saying? What else? What do you got next? What else? You know, people out there got to be more to life than this. You're like, man, this is wow. This is wow. The stuff I get to experience right now is wow. It's, a, it's the best roller coaster ride I've ever been on. It's crazy, yeah. My hours crazy, yeah. Things going on fast and furious, yeah. But it's wild. It's not a dull moment. It's an awesome, wonderful experience. It's life because Jesus brings life to those who follow. Him. Then Jesus says, "No one comes to the Father, but when you understand this. Jesus is the only way to get to the Father. Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's not one of the ways." This is one of the, the tough ones because when you talk to people from other religions, okay, and understand that there's a difference between denominations and religions. Okay, you all, you all understand that, right? Uh, Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, Lutheran, non-denominational, those are all under the Christian umbrella, the Christian religion. Those aren't other religions. They're under the Christian religion. Those are other denominations within the Christian religion. Other religions are Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, okay, those are religions. Okay? Other religions look at Christianity and say, y'all are so arrogant and think y'all have the only way into heaven. To which our response is, we don't think that. We didn't say that. Jesus said that. Take it with him. You know? He says he's the only way, the truth, and the life. We just tell him what he said. Okay? That's what our leaders say. That's what we believe. Because there's no other way. There's no back door way to heaven. But through Jesus Christ. We're all on a journey, people. We're all headed to one of two places. We're all headed either to heaven or we're all headed to another place. The question is, where are you headed? Our journey. Our journey begins here. These are the keys to our car. These are the keys to our journey. Number one, believe. Believe. In God's love for you and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever would believe in Him would not have to perish but could have eternal life. Do you believe in Him? Have you trusted and surrendered your life to Him? Because if you haven't, today you will have an opportunity to do that. Because it would be remiss of me to send you on your way after sharing all these things with you and not give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. To experience and taste everything that I've talked to you about. To have the peace and, and the, the way the, uh, to accomplish and reach the destination. And I'd invite you to join us on this journey. So at the end of the service, you're going to have that opportunity. But the first step is to believe. Then we need to trust. Trust that the Lord wants what's best for you. The best. God wants the best for you. That's why He said Jesus. He said the best. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He's going to make that path straight. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. There's going to come times when God's going to be asking you to do things that don't make sense. Okay? It's not going to make sense in our general understanding of things. But trust. Even when it doesn't make sense, trust Him. When you have an affirm knowing this is what God has asked me to do, trust. Trust. And you'll see that God will work these things out. Okay? He will get you to your destination and what you're trying to accomplish. So believe, trust, then go. Go make a difference and be the difference. Go make a difference and be the difference. Okay? Go make a difference in the world. We're all going through life, yes or no? Yes? Okay. We're all going through life. So as we're going through life, the scripture tells us in Matthew 28 to 19, uh, 19 to 20, go to all the peoples of all the nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to do everything I have told you or taught you to do. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the world, as Jesus' words to us. Go. As you're going through life, this is what you need to be doing. Okay? Go make disciples. Go help people. Go help introduce people to Jesus. Go help people come to know Christ. Go share Christ with the hurting world. You see somebody hurting and struggling, and you have the solution, and you're not sharing it with them. Something's wrong. 
Something's off. If somebody was on fire and I had a bucket of water, I said, well, I don't want to offend you by getting you wet. I'm just going to watch you burn. Does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, we'll see people that are struggling and dying and drowning and burning up in sin and in misery and in pain and in struggles. And we know how to help them. And we won't go tell them we don't want to offend them. Do you want to offend them by helping them find a solution? By getting them out of the pit and out of the pain and out of the misery? You don't want to help them? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you what, I'd rather hurt somebody's feelings by loving be trying to rest in them than let them continue to hurt and just watch them burn and drown and perish. But I'm going to say this to you, it's all in how you approach it. It really is. It's all in how you approach it. If you come out with that big old black Bible trying to hit them over the head with it, and you know, telling them how wicked and evil they are, yeah, they're going to be defensive on you. Okay? They're going to be offended by you. Okay? But if you come in with love and care and tenderness and everything Jesus taught us, and if you go back and study Jesus, you know how to do it. Okay? And you approach it that way, I promise you, they're going to appreciate it. They might not understand. They might not. In our class this morning, you might not see the fruits of that labor right away. It might be a year down the road. It might be three years down. It might be five years down. It might be ten years down the road. You might not see it. You might die and you won't find out until you get to heaven and they show up and say, thank you. It's all because of you. You started me on this journey when you had that conversation with me. You're like, wow. Get out of your comfort zone to help people come to life. We're all going through life. We're going to come across people every day. Every day you're coming across somebody. And if you're not, then you're doing life wrong. Okay? If you're in a cave somewhere you're not coming across nobody, you're doing life wrong. Even if it's a postman, he's coming up to your house. Throw a bottle of water and say, hey, bud, shh. here you go. In the name of Jesus, I share this with you. Just make sure it's not hot water. It's like, man, why not going to get me hot water? I was going to give me coffee. I would appreciate that, but they might not. You know? Go coffee hot on a hot day. People are like, you're crazy. I'm like, no way. Let's do it. All right. Go make a difference. And lastly, glorify. Travel in a way that brings glory to the Father. Remember, it's not about you. You know, we're talking about this morning again. That's so hard for us to understand. It's not about you. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's about one another and ultimately most of it's about him. It's about drawing attention to ourselves. I share different things with you, not so that you can think highly of me. You don't have to think highly of me. I'm letting it or not being one or another. I share stuff with you because I tell you, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm ordinary. Okay? But I'm willing to be whatever I need to be for the sake of glorifying God and sharing Jesus with Paul, I learned that from the Apostle Paul. He says, I can come all things to all men that by all possible means I might rescue some. Whatever I gotta do. If I gotta be up at school, hangs a projector in the classroom, so be it. So what? I know how to do it. I have the skills and talents and abilities. I'd be remiss not to apply. You know? So I say that's not my job, like everybody else says. That's an insult to Jesus. <laughs> You know how to do it. Bring it over to the Father. Matthew 6, uh, 5, 16 says this. Let your light shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father. They say let your light shine so that nobody sees it. It says a, a, basket, a, a light on a hill, if you can't cover it up. A city on a hill can't be covered up. You don't light a basket, a, a, a lamp and put it under a basket and cover it up. You've got to let that light shine. Let your light shine. But again, remember that your light is shining not to glorify you, but to glorify from the Father who is in heaven. Whatever praise comes your way, reflect it back to Him. I tell people all the time, don't thank me, thank Jesus, because if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing. But because of Jesus, I'm looking at how can I serve. Don't thank me. I tell people all the time. Don't say thank you. Don't say thank you. If it wasn't for Jesus acting the president in my life, this would not be true. That's just true. Give all glory to the Father.
let your light shine in a way that, yeah, they're going to want to know why, and then you point everything back, back to the master. We're all on the journey. We're all headed somewhere. The question is, where are you headed? Where is your view taking you? Right now, as you look at your life, and you're on the journey, where are you headed? Are you going where you want to go? Are you going where you hope to go? Or do you notice that, hey, your journey's not headed in the right direction? If it isn't, today's the day. Here's an opportunity. Here's an opportunity to get the keys that's going to take your car, take your life to the final destination that is in the presence of God and the kingdom of God. Joshua said, you choose. You make the choice. I can't choose for you. Nobody can choose for you. You have to make the choice for yourself. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much once again for this time together, for your word, Father, for this lesson, for the worship, for these wonderful and amazing people that were here today. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit just spoke into their hearts and to their lives, Father. And as you're speaking to them now, dear God. And Father, they're feeling that tug of war in their souls, dear Lord. There's so many here today that are feeling that battle. And they're feeling your call. And they're feeling you have reached out to them. And you're, you're inviting them to come and surrender their hearts and their lives to you, Father. But the other, the enemy is still holding on. And he will want to turn loose. And he's not going to turn loose, Father. They have to turn loose of him and grab a hold of you. Father, that you give them the courage and the boldness to do so. Father, that they might receive the blessings that come from walking and trusting in you, Father, and that you will receive it. If God has spoken to your heart this morning, and this morning you just realized that, you know what, the life hasn't been going the way you would have hoped it to go. Things aren't where you uh, hoped them that would be. And you realize that, you know what, you need to change your direction. And this morning you just want to cry out to God and say, Lord, help me change directions. Help me put you in control of my life. Help me take the keys of your vehicle, the keys of Jesus, because He is the way, the truth, and the life. And let me surrender control to your Lordship. If that's you this morning, there we go, Matthew. Raise your hand. Would you raise your hand high? If I could pray with you. God bless you. Is there someone else? God bless you. 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 You can put your hands down. Just raise your hand high. Say, Lord, this isn't going the way I thought it would go. This isn't working out the way I thought it would work out. And I know and I realize this morning that if I don't surrender control to you, I'm going to drive off a cliff. That's where this people's going. And I'm going to end up not with you in heaven. I'm going to end up separated from you for all eternity. Is that you this morning? You just raise your hand high and let's pray together. Let's pray about this. As you invite Christ to take control and to control your church. Is that you? This is a tough part. Okay? This is a tough part. If you raise your hand this morning, I want you to stand. By standing, you're acknowledging before man and before God that you've made a commitment to surrender your life to Him. You've surrendered your heart to Him. And you're surrendering control to Him. That's you this morning. You stand. We're going to pray together. We're going to close out this prayer. Say, Lord, I, I give it to you. I give it to you. I don't want control of it anymore. I want my life, if there's anything good that comes and flows through my life, it's going to be reflecting your gift and goodness, and it's going to give you the glory and the praise. And that's your prayer this morning. You stand, and let's pray together. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this time this morning. Thank you so much, Father, for the work you're doing in the hearts and the lives of your people, Father. Thank you so much, Father, that you love us with an eternal and everlasting love, Father. That you don't look at us upon what we're at or what we've done, Father, but you look upon us, Father, with a redemptive purpose and, Father, with a loving and a grace and a mercy, Father, that cannot be found anywhere else and with no one else. And, Father, you take us whatever situation we are in and you clean us and you cleanse us with the blood of your Son, our Savior and our Lord. And you make us whole and you make us new. And you begin to transform us, Father, into the image of your Son that we might be of use for your kingdom. Your word tells us that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
Though old things will pass away, behold, new things will come. And Father, our heart's desire is to bring glory to your holy name. So bless my brothers and sisters who have stood up this morning, who have called out and are crying out to you right now. And I pray that you begin a new work in their hearts and in their lives. And Father, that you protect them from the enemy, for we know that he's going to challenge this commitment and this decision as soon as they walk out of here. He's going to bring his attack. But Father, he is defeated and his power is broken, but they've turned loose of him and they've grabbed a hold of you. And more importantly, you have grabbed a hold of them. And as your word says, Lord Jesus, you will take them into your loving hands and then you will put them in the Father's hands. And no one is greater than our Father and no one is able to snatch us or them out of the Father's hands. Not even the enemy. Give you the glory, Father. We look forward to all that you have coming to bless each and one of our lives and to bless their lives and the new change of direction, Father, that's going to happen, dear God. Again, bring glory to your holy name. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask and we pray these things. God's people said, Amen. Amen.